but would you believe it? We're here post-match in the podcast studio. It must be a special occasion. Good Friday. Mm. Some would say a bloody great Friday at Cairo. Pummeled Plymouth. Cheers to that. Mm. What a win, Jack. Yeah, big win. And two weeks off. Norwich have obviously been in, in flying form at, at Carrow Road. But it felt important, Chris, particularly with Hull losing, that we won today. Yes. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah, massive. I, I can't deny the fact that I was absolutely shitting myself when? in that first half. Were you? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I, couldn't buy the, I couldn't bite the patience pill. I was a bit like, oh, God, boys, don't mess this up now. I'm sure I'm not the only Norwich City fan. It felt like it was coming, though. The goals. I don't know, mate. Like, I actually disagree. I felt like in the first half, we were so sloppy. Um, but not just in terms of our, our, our chances, but actually, um, I thought in possession, we were really sloppy. Um, mm. And actually, I, I felt that was hard. And we we did need to regroup at half-time. Um, but fair play to to the Norwich boys. They've, they've got through it. And that's all that matters at this stage of the season, Jack, isn't it? It's just win. Bravo, win or die. And we got the job done today. Yeah. It's strange, isn't it? Because I must say, I thought first half, Josh Sargent was incredibly quiet and looked almost slightly off the boil yes. compared to the incredibly high standards he set. Yep. And yet it's still, if he gets a chance, he mm. scores it. Yes. Good finish um, for, for our first goal. Yep. I mean, he is the most potent player in this division at the moment. Yes, he is. And a cracking stat from NCFC numbers, oh, by the way. Uh, I'm always prepped, me. I'm um, only prepped with Lakers. Josh Sargent is the first Norwich City player in the club's history to score in eight league home games in a row. Is that, that right? That's something else, isn't it? What wow. a stat from NCFC numbers. And But as you, as you say, Jack, I think that's a good sign, isn't it? Because Sargent had a relatively quiet one in terms of definitely that first half of help, but he did come into life in the second yeah. half. But um, as you say, wasn't quite at his full kelter. Um, but... I think that's okay because we now come into two, you know, monumentally massive mm. games, um, and we need him. Um, we need him at, at his best. Well, I mean, there's big weeks and there's big weeks. Next week is huge. Yes, and, you know, not only if it, is it you know completed with an East Anglian derby, but you are up against the side in what is it, second and third, or or first and yeah, third, yeah, yeah, whatever, Leicester. wherever Leicester are. But in terms of feeling confident going into a week, we couldn't have done too much more to. To set ourselves up for it. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. I mean, obviously, you would have, you would have liked to have said pummeling Plymouth at the start. Of course, that was sarcastic. It was, uh, it was one of those ones where I thought, oh, blimey, this could be a bit of skin. And <laughs> um, look, we could have pummeled Plymouth to put ourselves in an even more confident position. But yeah. as I say, let's not let's not be greedy at this time. Let's take those wins. Um, and as you say, we set ourselves up really nicely now for for that Leicester game, and and of course, the Sangland Derby. How are you feeling, honestly? Well, I'll. I think you know. We'll we'll wait. Do you know what? I'll tell you. You're nervous. I'll tell That's you. That's a nervous response. I'll tell you how I feel properly when we do our actual podcast, which will be after the Leicester game. Oh, a tease. Um, but at the moment, I'm feeling relatively confident, it... Jack. I am. Um, Ipswich have, have got a couple of injuries. Um, Norwich at home have been excellent. We've got a brilliant record. That record is. Not going to go away now because obviously that that next game is is of course against Leicester away. So you know Ipswich will be coming to Norwich and we would have been unbeaten in God knows how many games at, at Carrow Road. It is a fortress. It is a difficult place to come. So at the moment, I feel confident. But as, of course, as always, when you go into an East Anglian derby, you do think in the back of your mind, "Oh God, what if?" Sometimes you have to zoom out, don't you? And you have to go. You know, we're sat here today towards the end of March mm -hmm. in the driving seat for yeah. finishing in the top six. I mean, imagine if I'd have told you that at the end of October. I'd have gone, Chris, we'll have you know seven games left in the season well, I and, we said... will, and we will be in the playoffs and actually the favourites to yes. make sixth place. Yeah. You'd have slapped me about and well, gone, yeah. you know. I would, I would have said stop using that discount code on Lakens so much. Nice Jack. plug in the description. Um, you know, I would have said you're drinking way too much Lakens, Jack. But no, look, we, but we always have... The frustration, Jack, has come this season from the fact that the, the, the Norwich City faithful, the Yellow Army, know the quality and calibre of players that we've got. And that has been what's that has been what's so frustrating about this Norwich City side during that turgid mm. period, around that time. We knew we got the players to be muscling into the playoffs and now they've got themselves in there and, and, and fair play. We find ourselves in a really good moment um, and, you know, 
let's think about what could go right rather than what could go wrong. Like yeah. And I think everyone's thinking, oh, you know, Leicester on Monday, oh, it's at home, East Anglian Derby, da da da. And of course, we could, could, God forbid, lose both of those games. But what happens if we win yeah, both? Yeah, yeah. We've got Where to... does the conversation go then when we win both those games? And, and you know what? We, we've we given ourselves somewhat of a buffer. I know, I think Coventry have a game in hand, don't they? But having, you know, beaten Stoke and beaten points on the board, Plymouth mate. today. Even if points we, on the board. Even if we were to lose the next two, we're still in a good position. Yeah, absolutely, um, mate. Yeah, so we that are. feels positive. We are, and actually, if you look at the games after Leicester and Ipswich... I can't see us losing. <laughs> no, no, I can't. No, no, I can't. I can't. Have you seen the fixtures? <laughs> we shouldn't be losing. After Leicester and Ipswich... You were doing we so well be... to be no, reserved no, no, and no. humble. No, I don't need to be, do I? <laughs> it's, it's pointless. That's what I think. I look at those fixtures after Leicester and Ipswich and I think, come on, let's have some. Well, look, we are back for the podcast on Wednesday. At we some point. It? It's at some, some point. point next week, before the East Anglian Derby, after the Leicester game. Yes. We are going to have a jolly old evening mm. on the lake. And mm. We may well stick on a Gabby Sarah highlights reel and uh, and, and have a, a, a fun evening. A what? <laughs> look, we've beaten Plymouth 2-1. Goals from Josh Sargent and Sam McCallum. What's your, what's your final message? Um, OTBC. Smooth. See you later. Bye-bye.